do have to say I love the Amex 1390 play from both teams. Obviously, uh, they're just such fast mobile tanks that can get around. Obviously, great for scouting, great for doing damage. And I have to say I love the French line. Yeah, the French line is a really fantastic line to play. And one of the tanks that is a lot of fun to play as well is the Amex 1375, which is the parent of the Amex 1390. We actually had a really good time checking out the Military Vehicle Technology Foundation with the Chieftain and checking out one of the AMX 1375s they had there. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hi, I'm Clutch. I'm joined by the Chieftain. And today in the garage, we're going to take a look at the AMX 1375. Now, Nicholas, when it comes to French tanks, I usually think of baguettes. What can you tell me about the AMX-13? AMX-13 basically came in two variants, a 75 millimeter and a 90 millimeter. The program started as soon as the French restarted the production facilities after World War II. The first AMX-13s rolled off the line about 1953. In order to keep the weight down, what they did was they reduced the crew numbers. Hence, AMX-13 originally was only 13 ton. Which crewman do you get rid of? The easiest one is the loader. So what can the autoloader do? The trick with the autoloader is you have to make sure it aligns correctly with the gun. And uh, that's where the oscillating turret comes in. And what this does, it means that the autoloader system in the back of the turret and the gun at the front of the turret are always aligned. The trunnions on the gun are usually towards the front of the turret where the mantlet is. Here, the trunnions are exactly halfway back the turret. So the entire turret moves up and down uh, instead okay. of just the gun. Instead of just the gun. Now, are oscillating turns still used today in modern tanks, or is it phased out? No, they, they were phased out. After a while, especially once you had gun stabilization systems came into effect, mm -hmm. they just really weren't compatible with the war that they were expected to fight. This was not going to be found on the front line of the Fulda Gap as this great red Soviet Ford was coming over the hills. And this is a reconnaissance vehicle. It is a cavalry vehicle. It is not a main battle tank. If you ignore him, the AMX-13 can quickly nip around the side and teach you a lesson pretty quickly. <laughs> what can you tell us about how this tank performs in World of Tanks? Well, there seem to be two ways of playing it. Uh, one is you go around in groups. The, the advantage of the auto loader is you put out a lot of damage quickly. The disadvantage is that after you've used OP6 rounds, you are completely defensive. So you're trying to escape. If you have a group of two or three of them, you can very quickly eliminate a vehicle and then go out and reload and there's less threat coming after you. The other thing you can do is you can use it as a counter reconnaissance vehicle. An enemy light tank will come after you, especially if it's something fast like a T-50-2 or something like that. Mm -hmm. This thing can put out firepower quickly enough to bring it down, and also it itself is quick enough to chase after it. So that becomes a question of team strategy. Do you want to have a large portion of your force in a hit and run role, or do you just want to have uh, a single vehicle as a reconnaissance vehicle, as a harassing vehicle, and as a uh, counter recon vehicle? You'll have a lot of fun zipping around the battlefield in an AMX-13 in World of Tanks. We'll see you on the battlefield.